Okay, um, a lot of times I do talk about what is my, what is the focus of my ministry? You know, what do I feel like I'm called to do? And that gets, that's been pretty consistent all along. I'm not teaching anything that I haven't taught since the beginning of my channel two years ago. Wow, it's been two years. Uh, the main focus is to, uh, to get condemnation. Loads and loads and loads of condemnation off the, what I call the beaten sheep who for various reasons, typically physical, psychological, emotional, home abuse, and religious abuse have been pretty much convinced that they are not pleasing to the Lord. They can't be pleasing to the Lord. They'll never do enough. They'll never be able to make it. Okay, um, my stated intent is to minister Christ as justification, sanctification, our life, and our reward. And that's entirely scriptural. Christ is our life. Of God are you in Christ Jesus, who has made unto us wisdom from God, justification, sanctification, and redemption. That's 1 Corinthians 1.30 that shows that Christ is the content of every phase or every area of the Christian life. And Colossians 3.4, I believe, says if uh, that when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. And Paul said in Philippians 1, for me to live is Christ. And he said in Galatians 2.20, uh, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And this realization has been hidden from the eyes of Christians for most of church history. And the only alternative to this realization is legalism in various forms uh, and condemnation and performance. Putting the demand on the flesh to perform, okay, uh, versus Christ as life. And seeing Christ as life and learning about all the good things that he is in you and having a heart full of appreciation of what he is and who he is to you is the key to fruit bearing in the Christian life. That's called abiding in Christ. Remember, John 15 was written long after all the other epistles. And it's John's final word about discipleship to the church that had largely apostatized from the revelation of the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory, because Paul's ministry had been stigmatized. At the end of his life, he said all the churches in Asia had fled, uh, departed from him. The churches in Jerusalem had rejected him, all the ones associated with uh, the churches in Judea. Because of the mischaracterization of his ministry by Judaizers. And he was, and false brethren, and misunderstanding among the churches because they were carnal and couldn't receive Christ as life, which is the meat of the word, really. Uh, they just could not receive his ministry. They couldn't understand it. There was a veil, and the enemy attacked it. And that's true in every generation. He was in jail because of the word of God. He was in jail because of his testimony. He was imprisoned uh, as an evildoer and a sower of discord because of lies told by his countrymen and false brethren and Judaizers and legalists, Gentiles and Jews. You know, it came from everywhere. And that was an attack from Satan on his teaching, which focused first on Christ in you, the hope of glory, and then its effects. Now, John was written 30 years after Paul's death, after John came off the Isle of Patmos and had written Revelation. And he wrote it in Ephesus, the church that had left her first love. And uh, John's focus was to simplify everything and show that Christ is everything in the Christian life. By becoming our satisfaction. That's what the Gospel of John is about. And the last word in the Bible about discipleship is John 15. 
If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free, and you need to abide in me, and I in you. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, you will bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. The last word on discipleship is that Christ has to be the discipleship, the reality of it, by you abiding in him and him living his life in you because you're a branch of the vine. You've been grafted into him. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. This is the mystery of the Christian life and there is no discipleship apart from that revelation. What I have found is that because people have heard about holiness and discipleship, apart from that revelation, it has become, and this is me, myself included, a pile of works where you're looking at the fruit and not knowing how to care for the root. And so then you put the cart before the horse. You try to produce fruit rather than keep the soil in which the incorruptible seed of the word of God has been planted good. All we need to do is tend to the soil. And th what is that? That's our heart. Okay, the word has been planted there. We received the word of life. It's uh, it's incorruptible and it's and it bears its fruit. Paul said in Colossians that the word of the truth of the gospel has been heard and it's bearing fruit and growing in you as it is also in all the world. The word itself bears the fruit because the word is Christ, and the Bible talks about fruit bearing. As a matter of abiding in the word and letting the word abide in you. And the word is spirit and life. The Bible does not disconnect the spirit from the word. And the word is the word of Christ. It focuses on his person and his work. And it's by the acknowledgement and appreciation of his person and work that we're free from the condemnation and the death which grips us so that his life can be released unto fruit bearing but it is his life that bears the fruit and so what i teach is for the purpose of getting people's eyes off themselves and back onto christ where it belongs if your eye is single your whole body will be full of light don't look at yourself in your performance look at christ and the people who are attracted to my teaching are people who genuinely want holiness but have given up hope that they could ever have it because they think holiness is a matter of behavior and now they're starting to see that Christ is their sanctification and all they need to do is have a heart full of thanksgiving towards him and everything else takes care of itself and what I see after two years of sowing the seed of the word and keep sowing it is people being released from condemnation fear legalistic notions surrounding justification sanctification and reward that and, and learning to put the burden, take the burden off themselves and put it back on Christ where it belongs and to see themselves merely as a branch in the vine and to understand that the life of the vine is what produces the fruit. And all we need to do is make sure that our heart is free for the spirit. And so what I see is people who saying, and I get emails and comments regularly saying, I am free from condemnation. I've entered a rest that I've never known before. My heart is so full of thanksgiving towards the Lord. I can read my Bible now, which I couldn't do before because every verse condemned me, but now I know how to hide in Christ. And I see them ministering to each other. I see them encouraging each other. I see them ministering the word of grace. I see them supplying life through their comments. And I also see them responding to needs by praying for each other. And if there's a financial need, I see people jump to meet it. Um, what else is there? What do you want? You know, because there's this idea that we're saying holiness and desiring to uh, do the will of God is legalism. And that's not true. But what we do say is that holiness is Christ. And Christ is the word. And you either have a Christless holiness, which is legalism, or you have Christ. And Jesus Christ wants to bring our attention back to himself. It has been diverted 
to everything but him. And so some people are offended by this teaching, and that's just going to be the way it is. But I uh, am not trying to say that the desire for holiness is not right, because Christ is our holiness. But if you have a desire for holiness that is not a desire for Christ, then that means you've separated holiness from Christ and you're wanting something else. The holiness itself can become an idol. And you either see that or you don't. The people who listen to me do. My intention is not to attack anybody. But yes, I am teaching a teaching <laughs> that I can see that everybody has de deviated from and nobody teaches. And so, of course, it's going to produce all kinds of discord. Uh, and people are going to reject it. And that's their prerogative. Um, but... Please know that when we teach Christ and we release people from condemnation and they discover that they are pleasing to God because they're in Christ and Christ is in them to be everything and they can enjoy him and he becomes their satisfaction, that is holiness. You know, if you don't recognize that as holiness and you think holiness is about your works, then yeah, unfortunately, you do have a legalistic concept that needs to be addressed. And I'm not, I'm not saying that to attack, but I am saying that as a point of truth, you know. So I just wanted to address this because it's kind of going around. And uh, no, I'm not really defending myself to people, but I'm definitely uh, contending for what we're doing here. <laughs> yes, it produces real holiness. Sowing the word is the best thing you can do. Showing people who Christ is and what he's accomplished for them is what we do. That's the gospel. And that life in them, when he is free and doesn't have to be filtered through all the layers of fear and condemnation, the spirit of fear, and people are learning to live in the spirit of sonship and agree with the witness of the spirit that they are sons of God and heirs. There's no condemnation. The Lord is pleased with them. He's not rebuking them. He's drawing them near to him. Produces real holiness. Uh, because it releases Christ, who is our sanctification, to be everything to us. There is no other holiness. Anything else is just religion. All right. Thank you.